Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to be planting my summer vegetables or getting started here on my summer vegetables. I did my tomato and pepper plants from seed in the house. Uh, other things like zucchini, uh, my beans, cucumbers, um, I'm sure I'm missing something right now, okra, uh, are going to just be direct seeded into my uh, garden space. Uh, I've got a few other things I started from seed that would be in the edible category. That would be herbs like uh, basil and oregano and thyme and probably a couple other things and I usually put uh, the herbs along the outside edge along this pathway along this walkway a lot of it's still here the sorrel and fennel and that kind of thing from from last year the perennial ones uh, are and other perennial ones going in other annual ones going in but they go along right along the bed edge the second layer uh, that's important for my uh, vegetable garden is all of these trays uh, that are in front of the camera here all of these are flowering things. Um, there are zinnias and ageratums and marigolds and gomfrina and um, I can just go on, I can literally just go on and on with the number of pollinator plants that are planted into this landscape, which dramatically um, increases um, the yield uh, on your vegetable plants, making sure that you have pollinators here. Tomatoes are self-pollinating. You can shake a tomato plant and get it to uh, self-pollinate. Uh, there is evidence that cross-pollinating them uh, is, um, makes for more nutrient-dense fruit. Not sure if that's true, but it sounds good. <laughs> so, but I do like to have pollinators in the, in the garden. There's no reason for a pollinator to come uh, to, your, uh, you know, to your vegetable plants necessarily if there's not other things to entice them. And the entire purpose of this landscape is to invite them in. So all of these things will be going in in the next week or two as well. Here's my uh, cool, a lot of my cool season vegetables. So lettuce is looking great here along the front. Kohlrabi that uh, will form that little bulb down at the bottom pretty soon, uh, the edible part uh, of the kohlrabi. Uh, there are collards that will just be eaten with um, as greens. Um, or, you know, that will still be pretty small when they're being eaten. There's kale and other things. I'm going to be planting some of my summer vegetables directly in here. I'm going to plant my peppers right down the middle of these uh, lettuce. They use, I, I put the peppers on this side here so they get plenty, plenty of sun all summer. Uh, if they get a little height on them here in the next couple of weeks, th they will probably shade my lettuce plants and extend a little bit of uh, the amount of time I can get lettuce before they bolt. Um, if we spend a lot of days here in the upper 80s and these are in the full sun, they'll bolt pretty quickly and stop, stop producing. So. Uh, I had all of my cattle panels, uh, which are right here, on this end of the, uh, of the vegetable garden the last two years. And I decided to move them uh, down to this end. Uh, they had been upside down the entire time too. Here, here, there, there's one right here I haven't flipped over yet. Uh, I have the wider part up here at the top now. Uh, but they're in their permanent, kind of permanent home now. So I, dro I drove these... Um, uh, fence. This is the top rail from a fence, um, which are pretty easy to knock down into the ground. Uh, and then uh, with the, and then I cut the cattle panels are 16 feet long when you buy them typically, so they were cut in half. So these are eight foot long cattle panels. They can actually go this way. They can actually go up. Okay, if you want the vines to be able to reach up much higher, um, I typically will trellis my tomatoes, um, desucker them. When they reach about this high, I just let them have at it. You know, they'll eat them, you know, they'll do all kinds of crazy stuff up here. I don't mind. I've never had a problem with that, but I do keep this area through the bottom here open. You'll see that if you follow along with the uh, channel. I do desucker them and prevent, I, I allow air movement through the bottom of the plants. Again, you can see that uh, as the season goes on. I put about five tomato plants per this eight foot section. Uh, and that seems, to, uh, that seems to work out. These sections are about two feet apart. They could probably be three feet apart if I had a much larger space, but this is a small lot, urban lot here in Raleigh, North Carolina, um, and uh, trying to maximize the uh, yield, they're about two feet apart. I did a video prepping this space before the uh, cool season vegetables went in not that long ago, and new compost was added to the top here. This soil, when I started on this project, uh, two years ago, there's a earthworm, uh, is mostly clay. And so there was some compost tilled into it. So it was tilled once. 
Since then, each time new compost has been added, I try to, as I'm standing in it, okay, um, uh, do as I say, I guess, uh, not as I do. I try to limit the foot traffic uh, in the garden as much as possible. You're trying to prevent uh, as much compaction um, as possible. Again, this is such a small space uh, that it's sometimes difficult to, uh, you know, I've, I've got a much wider square than I would probably have if I had more space. I'd probably have narrower rows where I could reach across it without ever stepping into it. You know, again, I'm dealing with what, um, you know, the space that I have that happens to be in the full sun. And uh, so there you go. I uh, have beautiful tomato plants again that I did from seed in the house. Um, part of the tray is actually Cosmos uh, on that end, but the tomato plants look great. They've stretched a little bit, and so I'll plant them down uh, a little deeper, and we can get started on that uh, right now. So again, this is the top rail from a chain link fence, uh, pounded down in the ground, uh, and then uh, the uh, cattle panels attached to it. It's a half a cattle panel, it's eight feet. It's eight feet, and it's attached using um, basic zip ties. These are, I think, are six inch zip ties, which is plenty to do this. And in fact, I used zip ties on these two years ago and I had to cut them off to move them over here. So these zip ties, I don't know how many years they'll last holding this thing on, but um, they've been quite effective. Um, one thing, then, then, I, then I've cut them off even, okay? Uh, one thing I'll recommend if you're using this top rail, water can get in here to the top. So if you don't put some sort of cap on the top of it, I would drill a couple holes down here lower, small holes, just a weep holes, to let the water out of them because uh, mosquitoes obviously uh, will, uh, will have a field day um, in a pool of water in there. So I've got, uh, my favorite variety of tomato is Bronze Torch. Uh, I did 10 plants, which will yield an absolute ton of, uh, of tomatoes. Uh, again, these are gonna be, this is just basically now, a lot of compost here. I can, you know, by hand, you can see how easily I can go down in this soil. Again, I get down to the clay. You can see the beginnings of that clay, but even it um, is, uh, is looking pretty good. And we can bury, I'll show you this. I'm not gonna show you how to plant every tomato, but I will show you that I can put these down pretty deep in this spot. These we're done inside. The roots are pretty loose on them. If you want to loosen them up some, you can, but these are in pretty good shape, uh, really. They're not, they're not terribly, terribly root bound. Uh, and again, you can bury tomatoes. And I'm gonna start by popping him through there just like that and setting it down in there and covering it up, tamping it down. And it'll just get fed through here. I'll actually feed it this direction a little bit and then up here and basically back and forth like this. I'll, I'll allow it to occupy about two feet of this and I'll just zigzag as I go. And I'll take off the suckers. I'll show you what I mean by that once they start putting on some growth. Let's put one more in and call this a tomato lesson for this year. Make sure you put your tag um, on the corner you know, of, of whatever you're putting in. I've got six varieties, six cattle panels to plant. So um, that, was, that, was done with, that was done with intent. And I'll put the tag for the variety um, right at the end. I'll skip down to right about here. And same thing. This soil, you could never have done this by hand two years ago. And these will go down pretty deep uh, in the soil. Let's see, we're gonna weave them through just like that. So we've already gotten it started, just like that. And if those roots need to be broken up, do that. These are pretty loose. And there you go, and water them in heavily. I'm, I fertilized out here when I, did, when I put the cool season vegetables in and I fertilized this entire landscape. I will put a small amount of garden tone some sort of organic fertilizer on them, maybe in a two or three weeks. Uh, but again, it was fertilized fairly recently. I like to grow my vegetables slowly, just like everything else in this landscape. Um, they'll jump, they're gonna grow very quickly, uh, but I'm not really trying to force that growth. If you force that growth and use inorganic fertilizers, you will invite pest. You will invite more pest. I'm not saying my, my vegetable garden is pest free, but 
I don't have that many problems ever in my vegetable garden because I'm not pushing the plants. Pushing the plants is the way you get lots of chewing insects um, to arrive uh, in your vegetable garden. So that's it. That's the basics of the tomatoes. The peppers are going to go in the ground the exact same way. And if you've got, if your peppers are stretched, the exact same thing. Peppers can actually be planted uh, down deep uh, as well. Looks like from what I have in this tray, and I'll pick it up and bring it back to the camera. Uh, looks like these are in pretty good shape here. I don't really need to plant this uh, down deep. The roots are a little bit root bound on these, so I'll pull at them uh, just a bit when they go in, but exact same. I use the exact same planting technique, and I'm just gonna make a single row across the front of this vegetable garden. Squashes are something that I always do um, from seed. So, uh, you know, any, any, of the, uh, any of the squashes, beans, and again, okra, which I collect my own, uh, I collected my own seed from. Uh, a lot of uh, recommendations on hilling these up some. This is pretty well, pretty well drained here. This, uh, this compost is just fantastic. I've used the soil cube compost, and I've used some other compost in here as well. Each time the vegetable garden gets turned out, or uh, turned over, a uh, new compost uh, gets added. You can see how, I mean, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't get through it with a tiller the first year, and now look at this. I can do this just with a hand trowel. You know, there's some effort being applied there, but look at that. It's just amazing. Uh, it's really amazing uh, how, far this, uh, how far this soil has come in the uh, two years uh, that have been growing in this space. But squash seed just barely really needs to be uh, needs to be covered. I will plant these fairly close together and then come back and, uh, and thin them later. Plants end up needing to be several feet apart really uh, to perform uh, at their best. I don't eat a heck of a lot of zucchini, but I do like it. And uh, I'll just make a uh, two long lines like that and I'll put I'll put the seed these seeds are over a year old and so I'm gonna put them about six inches apart I'll, I'll thin at least every other um, every other one as they start coming up or maybe they don't all come up because that seed is not that old I only have three left so I'm gonna put those the appropriate spacing which is uh, couple feet almost right there so that's it and I'll water that in uh, make sure you follow the directions on any seed packet some will say do you need to soak the seed uh, squash I've never found that I needed to uh, to soak it overnight they come up pretty reliably in just a few days so I'm not going to show every plant uh, going in the ground I have a playlist on the channel uh, for vegetables. And so if you want to go back and see the vegetable gardening videos that I've done in the past, I've got videos for doing them on con in containers on a deck to, you know, all kinds of in-ground, um, all kinds of in-ground videos and different and growing different things. Uh, at the end of the day, this is just about soil improvement uh, every year and um, not pushing, not really pushing as hard as you can go on, you know, seeing how fast you can grow them. Uh, letting them kind of grow uh, slow and steady uh, and then giving them organic fertilizer. So I, I did that several weeks back and so I, I'm not, I'm not going to do it for a few more weeks. And maybe sometime around midsummer I might throw out a small amount and I never use the full recommended rate for any of those fertilizers. If you've ever watched one of my fertilizing videos, there's no way I'm using as much as they tell you to use on any fertilizer bag ever. Uh, potatoes are looking great if you followed the potato uh, grow bag videos um they're up and and looking fantastic they are pretty heavy feeders they're in they're in all compost they were fertilized with the garden tone or actually plant tone uh, when i put the uh, potatoes in i will in the next week or two definitely come back and use another round of uh, garden tone plant tone whatever organic fertilizer uh that i you know can acquire uh, on these potatoes because again they are they are fairly heavy feeders the bags uh, dry out pretty regularly, so I have to, uh, you know, have to. I definitely have to pay attention to that, I'm keeping them moist without keeping them wet. But they also dry out really quickly, so there, there's a, you know, they do have to be monitored in these bags more than they would uh, in the ground. But um, uh, as you'll see in the summer when I harvest these, you'll see the results. Uh, it's you, know, you can get a lot of potatoes out of one of these 15-gallon bags. 
I put my okra along the fence uh, back here. Uh, you can control the height on it. You can cut the tops out of okra anytime you want to cut the tops out of okra and control them at this height or this height or whatever height. But I like to let some of mine get 15 feet tall. Uh, I like the flowers on them. And uh, I had some last year that were 12 or 15 feet. Uh, stalks were two inch diameters down at the bottom. They were basically okra trees. I kind of like them. And then I, I used those ones that I allowed to get large to dry out and then collect the seed uh, at, the, at the end of the season. But those will go in right here along the back. Same way that squash did, just barely covered uh, and watered in. Well, all those things that go in from seed, same thing, just barely cover them. Water them if they're not up in a week, you know, um, sometimes I'll go in there and get curious and, you know, dig around and make sure that they're still, uh, <laughs> that squirrel hadn't found them or whatever, or that they're, the seed are viable. Um, but no, m most of those things will come up pretty quickly. Timing, uh, my frost, my average last frost date is around April 15th. I had a frost on the 20th, a minor frost last week on the 20th. Here I am on the 25th, I think it is, putting these uh, vegetables in, which is pretty typical. That's pretty typical about 10 days after my average last frost date every year. Whatever your frost date, you might wanna look that up. Normally in these summer planting vegetable videos, I show a soil thermometer. If you can get an inexpensive soil thermometer, 65 degrees is the soil temperature that these tomatoes should go in at. There's a website that I will link uh, down below this video that you can also go to and see what the uh, soil temperature is in your area. Nifty little website that uh, farmers uh, use for uh, planting crops. Um, they don't do things, uh, you know, because it's May 1st or whatever. They actually do, you know, um, practice a little science and, and go by the uh, temperature of the soil. But tomatoes like soil temperature 65 degrees or warmer. One last thing before I wrap this up, I am gonna save some space over here, partly because I've got all these cool season vegetables and I'm gonna plant some things later. So there'll be some squash. They're gonna be cucumbers and beans, squash, okra, tomatoes, peppers, plus my herbs going in today. And then some space saved for some additional cucumbers. They tend to burn themselves out pretty quickly. So I wanna I want plant a second round of cucumbers maybe a few more squash plants, and uh, maybe even some additional tomatoes uh, later in the season. So that staggered planting will allow me to harvest vegetables much, much further into the fall. Again, there's a, a vegetable playlist that you can go back and uh, learn more about vegetable planting. I would actually prefer to have my vegetables just planted throughout the landscape. Unfortunately, this landscape is, I would call almost entirely park shade, uh, except for this one section. So I've got them all crammed over here. Um, if I had the luxury of using them throughout my landscape, I would. So there you go. Thanks for watching, guys.